All right, guys, welcome to video number eight. We're going to get into some CSS syntax now. Uh, I have here a CSS file that I have set up for us and uh, what is known as a CSS rule. Now, I'm going to break this down for you into its various components, but I just want to show you this first. This is how you comment out um, any uh, text in CSS. It's a forward slash asterisk and you end it um, in the middle you add your content so any notes to yourself or anything you want to label um, you might see this throughout my CSS files as I start typing things out just so I can separate things out neatly um, so I you know label like different sections like navigation or um, main content that kind of thing as areas start and stop um, so you would type it out uh, forward slash asterisk your content So note to yourself, and then end it with a asterisk and forward slash, so just the reverse. And if you notice, um, the text after this changed color before I added that. So anything after the asterisk is a comment by default, not just that one line until you add the asterisk and the forward slash. Okay, so that's a comment. I'm just going to uh, label this against the CSS document. All right, so let's break down our uh, CSS here. So um, I have a CSS rule here. Um, anything we, the entire thing is known as a CSS rule. I'm going to break down the different components for you. So here I have what is known as a property. Okay, in this case, it's the font family property. Okay, and it is followed directly by a colon. All right, so here's another property followed by a colon and a third property followed by a colon. Okay. Um, I'm just highlighting the colons here for you. One second. All right, so here we have our values. All right. And uh, our values are followed by semicolons. So here's three values. This happens to be a size value for our font. So a specific size of 24 pixels and a color or keyword. Anytime you use words like this instead of uh, uh, numbers, this is known as a keyword in CSS, right? Now all these have semicolons at the end. Um, in theory, the last one does not. I'll explain that in a second. So when you combine all this, when you combine a property and a value, that is known as a declaration. Okay, so this entire thing is known as a declaration. All right. When you have multiple declarations here, so these three here, this is known as a declaration block. All right, so that's a declaration block. And they have to be wrapped in these curly braces, opening and closing. Okay, and you can have as many declarations as you want, um, or you can just have one. Um, it is up to you, depending on what you need. So the entire thing is known as a CSS rule. Okay. The last component to this is the h1 here. This is known as the selector. This is how we select different elements in the HTML. You could also select names of divs, which we have added to our HTML document, or you can select names of classes, which we have not uh, applied to our HTML yet, but we may um, as we move along with uh, the project here. Okay. So one thing that I um, mentioned briefly and I didn't finish explaining um, was that in your CSS rules, and I'm sorry my mouse isn't lining up with what I'm saying right now, um, in your CSS rules, the last declaration you have in your list, in this case the color uh, in blue, does not technically need that semicolon to end that declaration, um, but just for good practices I would say never end a, um, a declaration without that semicolon. Okay. So I'm going to take away the uh, property here because I wanted to show you what the uh, HTML document looks like um, without the CSS. Um, it's attached, but there's nothing on it. So let's um, just save that real quick, and I'm going to load this page. All right, so as you would expect, our page looks a little bit drab and um, things are out of place. Even our pictures are really big because I haven't resized them other than for the layout that I put together in Photoshop. Um, so obviously a lot of work to do, right? Everything's still uh, the default styles that come with the, uh, the browser. Now I added an H1 tag and that's what the Bulldogs flag football was um, in the HTML. So let's go back to the CSS. 
I'm going to re-add what I just took away here. Paste it back in. And I'm going to save this. So we're calling out the H1 tag, which is what uh, that Bulldogs flag football was. Okay, And uh, we're going to apply these declarations to it. So save, oh, I already saved it. So let's uh, do this. So once you have the browser open, and because I didn't make any changes in the HTML, I don't have to resave the HTML. All I really, really need to do is reload the page. And the reload button will be in a different spot in different browsers. And voila! You'll notice that because this has the H1 attached to it in the HTML, and our HTML and CSS are now connected, it is applying those declarations to this. Okay. Um, if you refresh your browser and you don't see any changes, um, it's because your index or your CSS file have not been saved, so make sure they've both been saved before you re refresh. So that is how we apply styles to the HTML. And uh, real quick here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the layout that we were working on just so you guys can take a look at what we were trying to do. It's in my images folder here. I saved it as a JPEG so it's easier to open. We don't have to wait for Photoshop. So there it is, Bulldogs flag football in blue with the font we had chosen uh, and the sizing we had chosen. Um, and it looks good. So on to the next video, we'll start adding some more uh, CSS here.